All right guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Today I'm back in this 2011 Range Rover Evoque. You might remember this car. About 12 months ago I bought it as a present for my mom's birthday. It was a dream car. She'd always wanted one in Ferenz Red and she wanted one with reverse camera, power tailgate, heated seats and a leather interior. So when I saw this particular one for sale not far from where I live, I just had to buy it. I knew she'd love it. And she did love it. She was over the moon with it. Well, and still is to be honest. She loves it, even 12 months later. If you haven't seen the video where I surprised her with the car, then I'll leave the link below so you can check that out for yourself. It's only five or six minutes long, so it won't take you long to go through it. Anyway, as it's been around 12 months with what many of you consider the most unreliable brand on the planet, Range Rover, I thought I'd do a quick update video explaining everything that I've spent on it in maintenance, things that have gone wrong, and what it's cost me to run with things like road tax and fuel. I know many of you like these kinds of update videos because it just gives you a realistic idea of what this kind of car might cost to run over a 12 month period. So if you're in the market for a used Evoque, this should give you a pretty good idea. When I recently did a video with my own weird little car collection, Readley kindly offered to sponsor the video, and they've done the same today. Now if you haven't heard of Readley, you need to check them out. They're a digital subscription service for magazines. I think the best way to describe them, it's kind of like a, like a Spotify, but for magazines. Once you've signed up with Readly, which is very straightforward and easy to do, you get instant access to over 5,000 national and international magazines for just £7.99 a month. You can enjoy reading these magazines on the very user-friendly app, either on your smartphone or tablet. And you can read as many magazines as you like for one set price. You can also have up to five different users, which allows members of your family to also enjoy reading these magazines too. You can bookmark your favourite magazines and then just enjoy them when you've got the free time. For me, I use Readly most nights to either catch up on car magazines or anything remotely historical, but there really is something for everybody. Traditionally, before Covid, I would buy a Top Gear magazine from either the train station or airport departure lounge, but I haven't been anywhere for about 12 months, so Readly has come in handy. It also has a feature for offline reading, so you don't even necessarily need internet access. Because it's digital, it means it's totally paper-free, which is better for the environment. We will have a lot more time on our hands these days, so rather than just aimlessly scrolling through Facebook, you could be reading, learning, and just generally stimulating your brain. If you use my link below, Readly will give you two months totally free, and then after that it's just £7.99 a month, and you can cancel at any time. So, back to the video. Before I gave this to my mum, I did make some subtle changes to the styling. I'm not talking about, like, chrome spinners and, you know, slam it into the weeds, remap it, none of that sort of stuff. I just wanted to make it look a bit more stylish and modern. The Ranger of Revoke is very easy to modify. So the first job I did was replace the front grille with this gloss black one. The old standard grey grille was starting to look its age, the lacquer was peeling in various places and it just looked a bit cheap and nasty. So I went onto eBay and found this gloss black one for £72 and I fitted it myself which, you know, basically makes me head China now, doesn't it? It was just four simple screws and the rest just clipped into place, it couldn't be easier. I also bought the gloss black side vents which I don't think do any particular job, I think they're just purely cosmetic, but they match the new front grille. Again, the old ones just popped off, and these new ones just clip neatly into place. They cost me £85 for the set. Moving to the rear of the car, the horizontal strip at the back, which is now gloss black, it was grey, and again, it just sort of spoiled the look. It looked a bit... looked a bit cheap. I was going to take it off and get it painted, but my mate Paul at UK Pro Tints kindly offered to wrap it for me. It was a really quick transformation, and he didn't even charge me for it, because he's a good egg. So, cheers, Paul. The next thing I did in my aim to make it look a little bit more stylish was to paint the trim at the bottom of the doors. Now again, this was grey, and it just looked a little bit poor and old. So I popped the trim off and had it painted, that cost me £100. I also bought some new badges because the original grey badges were starting to peel and it just looked a mess. So I originally bought some gloss black ones, but then I thought that might look a little bit too much. So I bought some silver ones, now they cost me £18 each. All in all, and the cosmetic mods have set me back £293, which I genuinely think has put about £500 onto the price of this car, so it's good value for money. Next up, onto the oily bits. Now, the first mechanical job I had done was a gearbox service. Now, if you have an Evoque, you must get this done. It's not a big job, but it will just prolong the life of the gearbox. Now, this set me back £240. It wasn't faulty or anything before, but when they drained the fluid, it was black, so it obviously never been done. So, that was the first job I had done. Because it's a Land Rover, I suppose we should talk about all the things which have broken. The first thing was one of the key cases. Now, this was like it when I bought it, but the spare key looked like it had been in a food processor. It was just all mangled and chewed up. All of the buttons were just worn out and you could see the circuit board. So I went onto eBay and bought a new replacement key shell for £20. I swapped all the bits over myself, put a new CR322 or whatever the battery was in it, and now it's like new. The next thing which broke, which to be fair, could have been like this when I bought it, I just didn't think to check, was the near side front door lock. Sometimes it wouldn't lock or unlock off the remote key, so you'd have to reach over and manually open the door. Anyone with any sort of Jaguar Land Rover product will be quite familiar with this because it's quite a common problem. 
in fact had the same issue with my L405. It needed a new near side front central locking latch and motor, now that cost me £98 plus VAT plus £40 to fit. Now by this time it was due its first MOT. If by the way you're watching this outside the UK, the MOT is like a yearly roadworthy test just to make sure that it's fit to be on the road. The test itself cost me £40, but it did need a few little jobs doing. Um, both front and rear brake discs and pads needed to be replaced. It needed a new rear wiper blade and also a tyre. Now this, being a four-wheel drive car, you've got to match the tyres on each axle. So I ordered a brand new uh, Pirelli to match the other side. That cost me £126, plus fitting, plus VAT. That brings the total to get it through its MOT and to fix the door latch to £694.29. Then, da-da-da-da! something else broke. So, when you selected reverse, the reverse camera here, for the first few days the, the picture would crackle. So I thought that there was an impending problem. And it turns out it needed a new reverse camera. A genuine reverse camera set me back £282, which I thought was quite reasonable because I've had to replace a few uh, Kia reverse cameras over the years and they cost double that. So I didn't think 282 for a brand new Land Rover one was too bad. It also needed a new wiring loom to the reverse camera because that had deteriorated. So that cost me £137, plus that, plus labour. So that brought the total bill to fix the reverse camera issue to £648.50. The next thing will come as a total shock to you. You ready? That was it. Nothing else has gone wrong with this car. A nine or nearly ten year old Range Rover Evoque. Just this last week it was due its annual service so I dropped it off with my mechanic, I asked them to use genuine parts and the total bill for a full service was £282, which again I thought was perfectly reasonable. My mechanic even told me that when they'd got it up on the ramp there was nothing wrong with it, no oil leaks, no fluid leaks, it all looked pretty good. The only thing they mentioned was a rusty fuel tank guard. Now that's got nothing to do with the actual fuel tank because the fuel tank's plastic, but the guard that goes around it is getting a little bit ropey, so in the near future I'll have to replace that. But it's not bad going, is it, for a 9 or 10 year old Range Rover with 90, 91,000 miles on the clock. In addition to the servicing costs, there are some other costs to consider, like road tax. Now, this set me back £240 for 12 months road tax. Now, I believe that's gone up another £10, so this next year when I renew it, it'll cost me £250. The other cost, of course, is fuel. Now, this might surprise you genuinely, but it's not a very cheap car to run this. It only uses a 2.2 litre four-cylinder turbo diesel engine, so you'd expect it to be very thrifty. And it isn't at all. If I flick through the trip computer it says I'm doing about 20 miles per gallon which I think is terrible for a diesel car of this size. Granted this car spends 90% of its life driving around town rather motorways, I still think it's bad. If you compare that to my full-size Range Rover I average about 26 miles per gallon and my car's twice the size, the engine's twice the size with twice as many cylinders. It just doesn't make sense does it? Even on a steady motorway run this thing will struggle to do more than 34 or 35 miles per gallon which again is worse than my big heavy V8 powered Range Rover just doesn't make sense. Let's work out the fuel cost then for the last 12 months. So I've done around 4,000 miles, we'll say I've been doing about 22 miles per gallon. This will be a very rough estimate by the way because I haven't kept every single receipt for every single fill up because, well because I have, um, what's it called? Oh yeah, life. 4,000 miles divided by 22 miles equals 181 gallons of fuel used. Now there are 4.5 litres in an imperial gallon, so times that 181 by 4.5 equals 814 litres of fuel used over the last 12 months. The average price of V-Power diesel sits at around £1.40 a litre. So £1.40 times 814 litres, that equates to 1,140 Great British Pounds in fuel costs. So if I add the fuel cost to the £2,177.79 in repairs, upgrades and maintenance, plus £240 in road tax, that gives us a grand total of £3,557.79. That works out at just less than a pound a mile to run a Range Rover over 12 months. So it's not bad going really, is it? So yeah, that's about it. So thank you once again for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'll leave the link below. I'll also leave the link below to Readly so you can check out that app for yourselves. So yeah, cheers guys. I'll see you next time.